Uh, Salvatore in California, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Alex Ditto, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I will listen to you no matter what you sound like. <laughs> well, is it true? Do I sound like a, a demonic chimpanzee? You know, when I was younger, I was an activist, and I had to do a lot of yelling and screaming, and my voice suffered for it as well, so I completely understand. And, uh, no, I don't think you sound like a demonic monkey. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What's, what's on your mind today, sir? Well, uh, a couple things, and I'm going to try not to, uh, to be too long-winded like you, but um, I wanted to sum up a, a few of the things that have been going on in our world uh, with what happened at the Rossum Foods here in L.A. recently. Um, the gentleman, the schizophrenic homeless person that was beaten up and killed by police officers in Fullerton, um, what happened to the Amish people in Pennsylvania, the lady in Michigan with her tomato garden. Um, there just seems to be this, this bum rush to take our rights away from us. It's like they've just decided this is it, this is our time, let's go for you it. You know why, you know why, don't you? Tell me. Because the, because the foreign banks have standardized the way the cities work, the states. They've bought off almost all the major leaders. Most of the leaders are just social climbers who just do what they're told. They're not even aware of what's going on. People are kind of on an autopilot. And the, and the social engineers, the globalists, know that they have committed such incredible crimes that the American people and other nations as well are going to try to take their countries back. That's why tyrants put tyrannies in is so they can get away with robbing you. That's why when a bank robber comes in, they say, put your hands up and they tie up, you know, the bank president and the and the and the guard because they're about to do something really bad. Now, that's why the Nazis put a police state in before they did what they did. And, and so that's why they, they are bum-rushing uh, to let the public know you're slaves. TSA is going to stick their hands down your pants. We're going to radiate you. We're going to steal your pension funds. You know, we're, gonna, we're going to do this to you. They're, they're letting us know. They're letting us know. They're, they're trying to absolutely break our will right now because they know they've brought us in to a controlled depression. And that brings me to my next point. Another fellow Texan of yours who is no longer with us named Bill Hicks said that the real threat to the establishment in this country is us. And that's why shows like uh, Cops runs 24-7 on our television. It's to remind us that state power will always win. And, and they only show you disheveled, trashy people uh, to then give the image that the cops are always good, the public is scum. Exactly. And now I spent a lot of years in my young, my young ambitious days in the political arena. Eventually I did become a political operative. I worked for large multinational corporations. And then after my father died, the veil was ripped off and I saw exactly what kind of people I was working with and decided, that's it, I'm going to the other side. I, I eventually became a newspaper publisher. I published my own newspaper. And for, by the way, for your listeners out there, for anybody, including you, Alex, or anybody else out there in this country that decides to stand up and tell the truth, there is inherent danger. It's not just that they will try to discredit you and, and, and attack you publicly, but they will go after your family, they will go after your business, they will go after your economics. Well, Salvatore, I appreciate your call, and, and that may have happened to you because you're running a newspaper. That does scare them. Yes, out of the gates when I started 16 and a half years ago, a lot of harassment happened, and I, I told the system, I love it. Uh, I said, if this is what you want to do, bring it on, I'm committed. I'm, and, and that's why you got to go, like in sports, you've got to go 110% or you're going to get injured. But when you go 110%, you don't get as injured as much. And But they don't really do much to me now other than demonize me in the national media because they know I'm committed and I'm not turning back. And there's another issue here. If we all start standing up, they can't stop us all. Okay, the system's scared. I mean, uh, they've had to come out and admit the government grows the opium in Afghanistan now. Four calls coming up. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. The good guys lost. Well, how do the good guys get back on top again? Well, we stop being naive, and we stop being passive, and we stop just accepting the government lies and is corrupt. Our country hasn't been perfect, but it's been the greatest experiment in human history. Produced more wealth, more liberty, more patents, more freedom, more exploration.
than any other nation, hands down. Countries that had much more, uh, pros uh, you know, you know, much more resources than we've had, but a lot less prosperity because they had a history of just letting tyrants rule over them and a corrupt class system where the upper class, the ruling class, tries to keep the lower class from ever entering the middle class. This is the system. And incredible corruption is growing. It, it's, it's racing through the body like a metastasizing cancer right now. The founding fathers were obsessed with keeping corruption under control, with jealously guarding liberty and freedom. But now they've tried to sell the idea in the mainline dinosaur media that not trusting government, that caring about your rights is kooky or terroristic or evil. They tell police that if you talk about the Constitution, you're probably a killer. You want to murder police. That's in the training manuals that we've been sent by police and published for the public to see. This is a dangerous situation that we're in. And it's not going to get any better until we start standing up and saying no and really recognizing how corrupt the system is. Now, the alternative media has exposed Government gun running, drug running, child kidnapping, all these horrible things. But now the system just goes, okay, we're doing it, and just reports it in a bland way. So we've had victories, but at a certain point, they almost become defeats because it just sits there like an elephant in the room that's doing bad things in the room, leaving all sorts of horrible things you step in. And the elephant says, I don't care if you see me here. You know, for a while, the elephant was there, and we finally started to see it. And now the elephant says, well, I'm not leaving. I'm a big, giant elephant. All right, listen, I want to go to Tariq, Roland, Scott, George, Dana, Vincent, uh, and others. In fact, let's go to Hawaii first, but let's go quick because I want to hear from everybody. D does anybody care about the debt limit uh, being raised and, and giving a super Congress power, a new form of government? D does anybody care about the, um, the AAA rating being lost? And now S&P and others saying we'll probably lose more of our ratings? Uh, I mean, to the bankers that engineered the whole fraud, and now the White House is demonizing the Tea Party. The Tea Party isn't perfect, but it's against the Federal Reserve, against the globalist, wants to cut spending, cut down the size of the federal government. It is the best mainline answer out there. So it's being blamed. That'd be like Hitler being the presiding judge at the Nuremberg trials in, after World War II and uh, calling in... Um, calling in uh, General Eisenhower and blaming him for running the death camps. I mean, that's how rich this is, how ridiculous. But, hey, they know the public's maybe awake and, and doesn't trust government anymore or media, but they, they still don't have the details. Because I saw the comments coming in the last few days. Oh, I'm glad you got what you wanted. We lost our rating thanks to you, people like you, Alex. Really? Really? Really, it's not because tens of trillions to foreign banks. It's not because of all the government spending. It's, it's not because of the private Federal Reserve that says it's above the law. It's my fault now. You got to love it. Here are the headlines. World leaders race to head off fresh market turmoil uh, ahead of uh, stock markets opening worldwide the next few hours. U.S. downgrade sounds alarm bell. AFP, dollar to be discarded by world. China rating agency says CNBC. Uh, Tel Aviv stocks fall 7% on U.S. debt. White House advisor blames Tea Party for downgrade. See, see, here's the issue. We've been signed on to the mega banks who run the rating agencies publicly, who themselves are completely unsolvent, but they're too big to fail. So see, we're signed on to their debt, so now we're going to fail. And then they stand up there lecturing us. I mean, this is so brazen. This is so ridiculous that it may uh, oh white house advisor blames tea party for downgrade a top white house advisor is blaming the downgrade of u.s credit rating on tea party republicans who you say were unwilling to compromise on how to reduce the federal debt what are you talking about the, they the republicans led the charge to hand over power to the super congress and obama you got whatever you wanted none of the cuts even start till next year and they're paltry government increases its growth it's impossible to pay for They've set us on a collision course along with Obama, and then you say this. No, this happened because now the bankers have got us where they want us because the super Congress controls all spending now and, and is going to give them whatever they want.
They've got their people in control now. The House and Senate voted its rights away treasonously. When I use the word treason, I mean it. White House advisor blames Tea Party for downgrade. The top White House advisor is blaming the downgrade on U.S. credit rating on Tea Party Republicans. The advisor to President Obama, David Axelrod, I mean, that guy looks like a demonic rat, tells CBS Face the Nation on Sunday that the decision by the Standard & Poor's credit agency to downgrade the U.S. from AAA to AA plus for the first time was strong influenced by weeks of standoff between Democrats and Republicans over the debt. Axelrod calls the action in his words a Tea Party downgrade. Unbelievable. The, the banks have been positioning us into this downgrade. And you mark my words, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse by design. These are parasites. They're the ones that created the derivatives and sold them to everybody's pension funds. They're the ones grandstanding as the saviors. Ah. Oh. It'd be like if you came home and there was a guy with a black mask on coming out with your jewelry and your computer and the cops show up and the guy goes, hey, uh, you know, Alex Jones is the criminal and the cops put me in handcuffs even though I've got my driver's license and clearly live there and the cops pat the robber on the back. The robber says, it's Alex's fault I was robbing his house. All right, let's go to Vincent in Hawaii. We got 12 calls online. That's probably way more we can get to. Vincent in Hawaii, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, aloha, Alex. Aloha. What's on your mind? Well, I, I'm a carrier veteran. I just want to stop and concentrate for a little bit and just a little bit of reverence for the for all those those guys that perished. Uh, you know, regardless of what happened or how it happened, some of those old boys, I bet you probably listen to you, and I'll bet you that uh, I'll just bet you there's some good people about half that crew or who knows what. You know, oh, we have huge listenership of the entire military across the board. We can see the numbers and the and the IPs coming in, and I, I, it, it is sad whoever really died. My point is, is my military sources say SEALs died in the bin Laden raid. Yep, yeah, you got that right. I got a couple comments, a couple questions. I want to thank you about the Tim Geithner uh, credit rating comment. You know, it's real obvious. You can see right through that particular person. His face likes to twist and turn into this, like, four-year-old look, like he just got caught doing something wrong when he gets on something like that and then here you are debunking his comment how many months later i mean it was obvious he looked like he got caught he looks like an elfin weasel i wonder what he really thinks at home when he goes home you know he's doing his job and the guy goes home just like we do what what, what does he really think well at his home daddy about headed up uh what was it the ford foundation and we gave obama's mama her first job I mean, he's a total globalist. He's an absolute one-world government pusher. And to do that, they've got to bankrupt America. They use America to build their world government and then implode us in the end to uh, financially capturing us. Exactly right. You know, I was raised in Newport Beach, and I remember those people at Ford Foundation. They're, they're fascists. They're so haughtily gone in some cloud, you can't even talk to them. They're country club banker queers. That's exactly what they are. Vincent, I appreciate your call. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, who's up next here? Because the phones are all scrambled. Don in Michigan, you're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? Good. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You're absolutely right with the, the whole money thing. I mean, it was called. And, and was it not Janet Napolitano? Didn't she have... A uh, meeting with somebody in Texas when they when she would uh, wouldn't go to Washington with her, and said get six months worth of food. Absolutely, that was uh, that was uh, out in Nevada. No, no, Arizona is where that intel. You know, stay there. They're getting us ready for a controlled implosion so they can pose as our saviors as they always do.